Let us open our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Conquests in the Transjordan. Conquests in the Transjordan. Deuteronomy 3 verses 1 to 11. The conquest of Og, king of Basham. Verse 1. This chapter continues with the historical prologue that precedes the covenant laws and the decrees that make up the bulk of uh, Deuteronomy. The Israelites' de desert, desert wanderings have come to an end and they are engaged in the business of conquering and claiming the land. Verse 2. It is essential for a true estimation and appreciation of this history to realize that the destruction of Basham in chapter 3, 1 to 11 is in fact God's judgment and God's doing. Israel is his instrument. This point is made here where it is clear that in the campaign against Og, Moses and Israel are acting on orders given them by God. It isn't, it's not a mother's idea to destroy the women and children. It is a direct order from Yahweh himself. In respect to both uh, the specific instructions Moses is given and the general instructions God gave Israel for waging wars, Israel does precisely as they are told by Yahweh God when they exterminate the population of Basham. Verse 6, the word rendered destroyed destroyed is in fact a technical term uh, 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 means more precisely devoted devoted is it separated for a holy use that is what devoted means separated for a holy use it is true that these people were devoted to destruction but they were destroyed precisely to further the interests of the kingdom of God. They are destroyed because they stand in the way of God's good purpose. This is the sense of the word destroyed, which is also used in, in much more positive ways to ref, the refer to, th to things that are consecrated to the service of God. Og was very powerful, but he did not take warning by the ruin of Sihon and desire conditions of peace. He trusted his own strength and so was hardened to his destruction. Those not awakened by the judgments of God on others ripen for the like judgments on themselves. Deuteronomy 3 verses 12 to 20, the land of Gilead and Basham. Verses 12 to 17, the accounts of Israel's history that precede the lower giving concludes with a summary of the allotment of land of Israel, uh, the, the, the land that Israel had conquered up to this point, or the land that has been taken was east of the Jordan. Israel has not yet crossed into the, uh, the Canaan proper. Only the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh receive land east of the Jordan, perhaps because they had a lot 
of livestock, as it is said in, in chapter 3, verse 19, and needed a large range for them. Remember that the tectonic, the separation of the tectonic plate uh, between uh, the Arabic tectonic plate and the African tectonic plate is along the River Jordan. So, uh, physically, the other side of the Jordan was another continent. Verses 19 to 23. These verses detail the responsibilities of the tribes that live east of the Jordan to the rest of Israel. They are to accompany the other tribes across the Jordan and fight alongside uh, with them. Only after all the tribes have received their territory, may any man settle down on his own home. This country was settled on the Reubenites, Gedites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, as in Numbers 32. Moses repeats the condition of the grant of the grant the grant to, to to which they agreed when at rest we should desire to see our brethren at rest too and should be ready to do what we can towards it if for 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 we are not born for ourselves but are members of one another. Numbers 3 verses 21 to 29. Moses encourages Joshua. Verses 24 to 29. We have in these verses one of the most striking and important example of God's saying no to the prayer of one of his children. Moses' prayer recorded here asking God to relent and allow him to, to set foot uh, in the promised land is apparently not his first. During the month, perhaps years, that had passed from Moses striking the rock in Numbers 20 verses 1 to 13, to this point, with Israel poised on the east side of the Jordan, really at last to enter, ready, ready at last to enter Canaan, Moses apparently had pled often with Yahweh. That is the subjection of Deuteronomy 3 verse 26. Moses encouraged Joshua who was to succeed him. Thus, the aged and experienced in the service of God should do all they can to strengthen the hands of those who are young and want to set out in religion. Consider what God has done, what God has promised. If God be for us, who can be against us so as to prevail? We approach our leader, our leader, our great leader. If we follow him, if we follow him with trembling, Moses prayed that if it were God's will, he might, be, he might go before Israel over Jordan into Canaan. We should never allow our desires, the, the, any desires, any desires of our hearts, which we cannot in faith offer up to go by prayer. God's answer to this prayer had a mixture of mercy and judgment. God sees it good to deny many things we desire. He may accept our prayers, yet not grant us the very things we pray for. If God does not, by his providence, give us what we desire, 
yet if by his grace he makes us content with that, it comes to much the same thing, the same. Let us, let it suffice thee to have God for thy father and heaven for thy portion, for thou hast not in everything thou wouldst have in the world. God promised Moses. He promised Moses a sight of Canaan from the top of Man Pisgah, for he should not have the possession of it, he should have the prospect of it. Even great believers in this present state see heaven but at a distance. God provided him a successor. It is a comfort to the friends of the Church of Christ to see God's work likely to be carried on by others when they are silent in the dust and if we have the earnest and prospect of heaven, let these suffice us. Let us submit to the Lord's will and speak no more to him of matters which he sees good to refuse us. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us take these prayer points. Let us pray. Let us pray against hindering spirits. The memory scripture is, I quote, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Yahweh strong and mighty, Yahweh mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gate. Lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. End of quote. This is quoting Psalm 24, verses 7 to 9. Let us pray. Everlasting Father Yahweh, Speak victory and prosperity over your servants' life and family. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Father, I request your favor wherever I go. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Rain your blessings upon my humble life. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Grant me protection anywhere that I go. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Lord, guide me accordingly. Be with me. Draw near. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Father Yahweh. I pray against every spirit of blockage and barriers. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Whosoever have conspired together to come and attack assembly of Christ followers and create con and create confusion, Lord Yahweh, we pray that you set a guard as a protection against them day and night. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Angels of Yahweh, strike any man at the doorway of my house of prosperity with blindness, both small and great. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Let them become very wary trying to find the door. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Any barrier, any barrier preventing me to be close to you, Father Yahweh, break them into pieces. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Any barrier. 
preventing me to be close to you. Be pulled down and removed. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Every evil spirit attempting to hinder, attempting to hinder my blessings, be cursed. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Every thought or negative word spoken against me and my family, I rebuke you and erase you. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Every stronghold of darkness, Lord Yahweh, pull them down. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Lord Yahweh, lift me up whenever and wherever I may fall. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Lord Yahweh, hold me with your right hand. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Raise me up so that I will overcome mountains. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Sustain me that I will prevail against any blockage, barrier, or hindrance in my life. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I declare that I am victorious through Christ Yeshua, who strengthens me. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.